Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. How are you? It's been a long time. I haven't done a live in so long. And it's so nice to see a lot of you on my Facebook fans, my YouTube people. Um, you know, today's going to be a really good conversation about cybersecurity, how you can have a career in cybersecurity. One of my friends, Julian, has been in the industry for like 20 years. I was like, what? 20 years in cybersecurity? Um, and um, Edmund, you know, um, is also going to be on. Also, he's been in the industry for a long time. So just finding out what cybersecurity is all about, how we evolve, how we money, um, because, you know, we need to get paid for these things, right? Um, but yeah, just let me know where you are watching me from. It's been a minute. Um, so I want to see where you guys are watching me from, whether it's Ghana, whether it's Nigeria, whether it's US. Uh, let me know. I want to hear from you guys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hi, Awusu. Hi, Davi. Hi, Scott. Hi, Kay. Hi, Grant. Marcia Grant. California. Woohoo! Edinburgh in Scotland. London. Canada in London. Uh, hit me up. Hit me up. Let me know. Ghana for two weeks. How is it going? South Sudan. Abu Dhabi. Can you guys hear me? Let me know if you can hear me and you can see me clearly. So I'm going to invite my brothers on. I'm going to invite Julian and I'm going to invite Edmund on. Hey, Julian. Hi there, Denta. Can you hear me okay? Can you I hear can me? hear you perfectly fine. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Yep, I can see you. I can hear you. Can hear me. Okay, okay, brilliant. How are you? That's good. I'm, do I'm doing good. It's, it's dark here, as you can imagine, over here in London. We're back to the clocks changing. I think, that, yeah, they changed last week. So we're back to the dark mornings and the dark evenings. So I need to, I need some of that. Yes. That Ghana early morning cocks crowing, sun out. <laughs> <laughs> it's still morning here, so I'm, I'm still on my it's second equally. coffee for the day. Hey, it's Edmund. My, um, can you guys hear me okay? Las Vegas. I just want to make sure. Yes. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you clearly, Edmund. Yeah, we can hear you perfectly fine. Okay, perfect. Okay, Checking awesome. So today, I mean, you know, we're going to be having a conversation about cybersecurity, um, what that entails, how you both have a career in that. Um, even with Julian, like, I didn't even know that you've been in the industry for like 20 years. So that was just like a shock. Um, but yeah, I just really want to find out. 
I'll start with you, Julian. Like, how did you start out in the industry? Who told you about cybersecurity and why did you go into cybersecurity and why you you've been in that industry for so so many years? Sure. So so I've I've worked in cybersecurity now, as I mentioned to you, Denta, for 25, sorry, 20 years. I, I actually started out um in like selling PCs. So I worked for one of Alan Sugar's. So for those of you who know Alan, um, Alan Sugar, he does um, this program out here in the UK called The Apprentice. So he, had, he has a, one of his companies is called Viglan. Uh, so I used to do um, IT, like PC sales. Um, and then I had an opportunity. I, I wanted to move um, careers. And someone said to me, hey, you can make a lot of money um, within cybersecurity. So this was back in the kind of early 2000s. And, and so I went to a company, um, many people will know them, called McAfee. Um, at the time, they were known as Network Associates. So I was just the inside sales business development rep. So I was kind of like in my kind of early to mid-20s, um, doing like, you know, cold call sales into to all types of companies. And at that age, I was earning around £50,000 a year. So, you, you know, imagine that's kind of like what people who were coming out of university um, mm. and, you, you know, basically the industry has evolved. So, so right now, I the roles that I do now is I do more of the strategic kind of partnerships and, and, and business management relationships. So I look after companies like Fujitsu or Accenture um, or, you know, in the, in the UK computer centre. So I work with technology providers who basically go and you know consult like the NHS or banks or financial services around the security technologies um, and implementing those technologies. Uh, and, wow! Yeah, and, and, and put it this way: so, so right now, you know, the kind of earning potential you have is you know anything from kind of ten to to fifteen k a month in terms in terms of the types of salaries in the business uh, businesses um, really you know like we've never i don't know i just feel i've never really heard about cyber security it's always you know like african mentality has always been the doctors the lawyers you know what i mean there's never been about cyber security um it's like you can really make a, a lot of cyber security yeah, so I mean, it's a, it's a huge industry, and I mean, right now the skills gap that they have in cybersecurity is like there's around kind of seven hundred thousand jobs globally within within cybersecurity and that tech space, where you know there's opportunity you know opportunities for people to get in from either a technical or engineering or development side to you know people like myself who go out there and sell into organizations and, and companies of all of all sizes so it's a huge it's a huge opportunity um something that i'm doing right now over the last few years so i'm actually going to be over in ghana at the end of the month at an event called tech in ghana um so over the last few years i've been yeah. collaborating with um training organizations and companies in ghana where they get high caliber graduates from places like Sheshi or mess uh, and they put them through like three three month um, boot camp courses, you know, in terms of um, software developing or um, engineering, uh, and then they are outsourcing the, that talent to to global organisations. So so there's a company called Azubi Africa that, that I'm com currently collaborating with um, in Ghana, and I'm using my network and connections out here in the UK um, to to you know, source contracts um, for them to be able to, you, you know, provide their, their engineers into. So, so that's, you know, that's amazing. And I think that have come out of my career. That's, that's fantastic. And I think um, this is a good opportunity to kind of introduce what Edmund is doing and how maybe you guys can collaborate there. Um, so again, Edmund has been in the industry for a while. And I'll get you to kind of introduce yourself and, and how you got into cybersecurity before we speak about uh, what you're currently doing with the courses. 
Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, Julian, um, um, nice meeting you, by the way. Um, I yeah, wanted to... to I wanted to connect with you before, but I'm glad you know we are doing it now. And maybe after this um, session, you and I can talk because um, I'm doing a lot of things in Africa right now. Um, so you know, I started um, off working. You know, I came to the U.S. to come do my masters about ten years ago. When I got here, it was you know challenging trying to find a job. I did everything. Um, humanly possible to find a job. It was really, really tough until I met someone. Um, I met a friend of mine um, through, I joined the military at the time, met someone who said, you know, cybersecurity is a, it's a, it's a nice career field. And in fact, at that time, he told me he was making $300,000 and I thought he was just joking. I thought that was, you know, that was not possible. So, you know, he spoke to me about, he also had a training program and I was like, oh, you sure about that? I, I didn't take it serious for like, like a year. And one time I was working, realized, you know, the money I was making was really small. I was making $50,000 a year, doing two, three jobs, you know, just to keep, you know, just to live, right? So um, I decided to give it a shot. So I bought a book, started studying for it and then took some training courses. The very first time I got, you know, I got a job, it was with the U.S. government, uh, Department of Navy. Immediately, I was able to get almost $90,000, my very first jobs, and I was like, wow, this is not real, right? So I did that for about three years and then moved, kind of moved from there to another um, government agency, the Air Force. Um, at the Air Force, Force, I was able to almost double my salary at the time. So I was like, wow, this is huge. Um, so that got me to really, really, you know, take the course very seriously. And um, over the years, I've worked for technology companies like um, Intel, Google. I've worked for at and I've worked for a lot of companies and I consult as well. I started my company um, a few years ago doing um, cybersecurity training. But before then, I was also doing federal contracting. So I take a contract from the government and then um, I'll hire people to do their contract for me. So I did that for some time. And right now I have kind of moved that business away from Prime Tech to another company that I started with a, a, um, a partner of mine called um, Cybercore USA. Um, so that is what we do over there. And so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to, my main goal is to accelerate the training education and also um, employment of black people globally. You know, um, black people are my main, my main, they are like my main people that I really want to get into the field of cybersecurity. If you look at what Israel is doing right now, the moment you graduate from um, high school, um, you are supposed to do some national service, right? Sorry, college, you're supposed to do national service. And when, when you, they want you to join the military for two years. During that time, cybersecurity is taken very seriously. So today we have companies like Wix.com, Accenture, a lot of top-notch companies that are global conglomerates making billions and billions in revenue. And so we want to do the same thing. We want to make sure that uh, we get a lot more people in the field of cybersecurity. Um, and also my goal is like someone is trying to move back to Africa from the US, UK, Canada, Australia. We want to make sure that you find a job somewhere in the US, UK, take that job, go work in, go live in Nairobi, Kenya, you know, or Accra or Kigali, right? Take that money that you make, that hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars you make abroad, take it home, you know, and help, you know, um, let's boost the economy there too. So that is really my main goal. And um, I'm really, really excited to be on your show that uh Really, really excited. Is can Denta, can you hear us? Is she still there? Can you hear me there, Edmund? I can hear you. You can hear can me, you Edmund. Hear me? Dent is probably, can you hear me? We can hear <laughs> you now. The, MTN, the, the, the Wi Fi. Embarrass <laughs> me. MTN wants to embarrass me today. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Um, That's okay. I think that, I think what you're both doing, we can complement each other. Um, I think that, you know, what Edmund is doing and trying to make sure that we get talent from Africa, the same as you, 
Um, you're looking at the universities. He's looking at, you know, the people on the ground and seeing how they can get trained in cybersecurity and get jobs straight away. At the moment, if you look on the continent, we have a lot of youth. We have more youth than elderly people. Mm -hmm. And so if we're able to train the youth to get money, to get into good jobs, like Edmund said, we would develop our country. Because when you look at um, all of these other cultures that are in Ghana, Indians, Chinese, or whatever, they're working here. They take the money. They take it back to their country, right? Mm -hmm. And so we want to do the same. We want to do the same. We want to make sure that we are educating our people, giving opportunities to our people. Yeah. And I think that, you know, Edmund, what you are doing, so tell us a bit about the course that you are running and how people can join that course to be able to, you know, get onto that level where they can afford things. They can even buy a house, you know, um, they can, you know, they're able to get a good salary to live on. Um, so uh, my course is actually an eight week course. And um, what happens is every Saturday, um, so it starts Pacific time, um, 7 a.m., which I think is around 3 p.m. Ghana time. And um, once you enroll, we, we, we train you within that eight-week period. We have students we train who got jobs within, within, the, first, um, within the first seven weeks they got jobs. Because what we do is we train you so you know exactly what we do on the field, right? So I'm not going to just teach you everything about cybersecurity. I'm only going to teach you what you need to know in order to really take any cybersecurity job, um, it doesn't matter what the company is, what or the size of the company, whether it's technology companies or it's a small, medium skill enterprise. We prep you so you can take any job and excel on the job. And then once you get a job, we also like go through like if you have any questions, we have a platform where you can ask those questions. Um, we we prep your resume for you. We help you with certification so you can get all your certifications like CISM um, uh, certification, Security Plus, and all of those certifications. We also do live interview sessions. So um, during this time, you can come there, ask questions, and we will ask you questions as well as if you are in a real... Because I personally, I have interviewed a lot of candidates for technology companies, and I continue to do so. So I know the questions that are asked in any... Um, job interview, right? So that is what I'm doing. I'm trying to really help a lot of people. I'm trying to get a lot of people to succeed. Right? That is my main goal. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. And how long does the course take? You know, how is it intensive? Like how 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 is the course? Okay, so one thing I, I always tell people is cybersecurity is not one of those professions you learn today, you 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 get a job and that is it. Nah? That is not the field we are in. Cybersecurity is an everyday, um, you have to learn every day. You have to continuously know because technology sector is changing every day. And also mm -hmm. the, 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 the threat actors, they are changing their tactics by the minute, right? So you, in order for you to become good at it, you have to learn. You have to like be willing to do more research, right? But my, the course itself, it is only three hours every Saturday. Um, you jump on a class, but during the week, you know, there are other um, opportunities for you to chat with me and chat with my the rest of my team members, you know, to learn about cybersecurity. And also we have interview preps during the week. And that one is usually one hour just to, to make sure people are more comfortable, right? And so it's not that intensive. Everybody can do it. Everybody can, you know, you can enroll in this course and it's, you, you, it's going to work. You know, we're going to work around the clock to make sure you succeed in this program. Fantastic. Julian, what type of, so when you guys are working with the university, how long is your courses and stuff? Okay, so, so, so just to kind of piggyback off what Edmund was just sharing, um, I, I think you've got different avenues because the theme is getting started, getting a career or starting a career in cybersecurity. So for anyone who's, who's watching now, there, is, uh, there are a lot of free resources so if you think of the big players like Microsoft or AWS, which is Amazon, they have the most sought after certification programs in the industry. And someone can go online and register on Microsoft to become security certified, or they can go into AWS to become certified, or sometimes there's a, sm a small fee. Um, and there's lots of organizations that provide those. 
Now, those certification programs, they can take anything between a few hours to, you know, three months worth of training, depending on what level of skill you want to get to. But that's a really good starting point, you know, if you're wanting to get some understanding, um, you know, to understand the concepts or, you know, what areas you want to go into to specialize. Because um, as Edmund shared, it's such a diverse industry. So you can do security, you can do artificial intelligence, you can do data. There, there's so many different, you, can, you know, you can do compliance or government, there's so many different fields. Um, and then the other areas like what I do, which is more on the sales or business side. So, so that means, you know, just having a, a general understanding of the concepts and being able to have conversations with organizations or businesses around what they're looking to achieve and, and the things that they need to be putting in place um, to, to, you know, to have secure environments or to be compliant with um, regulations. So, so a big regulation in Europe, for example, is GDPR. And I had the opportunity probably three or four years ago, I came and spoke at a huge data protection conference in Ghana to a lot of organizations around, you know, being compliant. You know, if you're looking to do business or trade in, the, in Europe, you need to have these regulations. So I, I work with some of the um, consultants, you know, Ghanaian consultants, around kind of best technologies that they should be advising customers or, or organizations on. So to going back to the start there, there's online courses um, that you can do as a starting point. Like I said, Google or search like Microsoft or even um, Edmund has shared, he, he's got a program or a, or a course where they're going to walk you through, you know, those ba basic aspects. Uh, and then the, yeah. going back to your question, Denta, the organizations like Azubi Africa, um, who are based in Accra. So Azubi Africa is a, a company that I'm collaborating with. They're based in Accra and they do a three month program with graduates. So from, you know, graduates from Asheshi or Kwame Nkrumah University, where they take them on. And again, it's quite a, a stringent program, but they take them on and it's a three month program. And then after that program, those students are either Microsoft certified or AWS certified. So the great thing there is that's a globally recognized certification. So it doesn't matter whether you're in, you know, a, a, a small village in, in Ghana and you become AWS certified. Once you hold that certification, you're recognized around the globe. So that's a game changer in the, it takes down a barrier to say, people are looking for AWS certified engineers or Microsoft security certified engineers. And, you know, they're willing to pay for people who hold those, those skills and those qualifications. Okay. So there's a question that's on, on um, Kofi, Nana Kofi Bonsu. Can someone who's um, computer illiterate start a course in cybersecurity? Yes. Edmund. Yes, absolutely. Um, I started with no background. In fact, I was a type O, type one key and then be looking on the keyboard, right? That's how I was. And I have so many students who were like that when they started. But today, within eight weeks, we were able to transform them into cybersecurity professionals who make so much money. Um, you can do it too. You can do it, but it is up to you. If you are very determined and if you are very dedicated, as long as you can read and write, we can make you or you can become whoever you want to be. Right. Mm -hmm. So I highly encourage you to not give up because you, you don't know anything about computer computing. Please, you can do it. And just to add on to what Julian was saying, my advice to people who are starting out, don't limit yourself to one particular vendor. Right. So AWS, Microsoft is great. But when you do that, especially when you live in America, you limit yourself. Right. So what I always encourage them to do is go online. Um, if you go on YouTube, there are so many um, vendor-neutral certifications like um, CompTIA, um, ISC Square, or ISC Square is ISC and two. Um, please go to these websites. They have some of them. They even have free uh, cybersecurity training. Right, take those training, become certified, and then um, you know 
If you need resources, you can always find resources on YouTube as well. If you go on YouTube, you'll find everything. Um, and feel free, if you have any questions, you have my email over there, kindly email me and I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to make sure, you know, we, we show you the way forward. Edmund, it's a number as well. Edmund, can you send yeah, me yeah, your number I'll, as well? Because sometimes people... Yes, I'll post like... my number here to make it easy. Yeah. And so when are your courses um, starting again, Edmund? And how can people join you? Email you, WhatsApp you? So, how, how, how does it work? So I have class a class that is currently ongoing, but that class is full. Um, if you want to take part in the one in January... Sorry, Denta, you were breaking up a little bit, um, so I didn't hear you. Uh oh, can you can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, can Denta. You guys hear Hi, Denta. Me? Your I think the question was, when is your course starting? The, the next round of your course, yeah, and how can people um, register for it? Join exactly. Oops, it looks like Edmund has froze. Denta, can yeah. you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I think it's Edmund. Yes, it's not just MT. Edmund. Yes, that's too. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Edmund, are you back? Hear that. I'm sorry, breaking. So, Edmund, are you back? Is it my network? Yeah, you. Yeah, I'm back. Is, is that my network or that's your network? No, no, no you it's your network. You it's it, you in Las oh, Vegas. It's you really? in Las Vegas. Yes. <laughs> Oh, really? This is strange because I have the best network out there. Trust me. I'm a cyber hey, security hey, guy hey, and I have a lot of computers, but I shut it down. Okay. Please, you are breaking. I think I'm it's breaking. MTN. Let's put the blame on MTN. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're going to say it's their cyber security. It's not Can keeping you imagine? Them the yeah? Can you imagine? But okay. do you think, actually, that's a good, that's a good thing. In Ghana, do we have good cyber security like in Africa on the yeah. continent? Absolutely, there are really a lot of smart cybersecurity professionals. I'm a CISSP. No, 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 not, not professionals though. Like in uh -huh. terms of like security, isn't cybersecurity oh. the same oh, as okay. like online? Yeah, like do we have good cybersecurity? I think I think cybersecurity in general, right, is an mm -hmm. evolution, and it's now getting into Africa. The reason why I say this is because even in America, it's still it's still new here. Okay, so if you become a, a cybersecurity professional, you are part of the new people who are changing the world. I'm, I'm being honest with you. I say this because in America, I, I have worked for, I've, I've, I've consulted for companies who are still using what we call local admin. So local admin means even on your web computer, you can do everything you want. You know, you can, you can visit websites that are restricted without any punishment, right? This is a technology company. This is a company that, you know, should be the gold standard in cybersecurity, right? So we have a long way to go globally, including Africa. Companies need to adopt and embrace cybersecurity. Um, I have seen a lot of things happen in Africa, like recently, the, the ECG of Ghana, for instance, they were hacked, a massive security breach that they ended up losing almost 100, um, 100 I, I, I heard it was almost... Um, 100 million Ghana cities, right? So that is a lot of money. Nigeria, even the UK, the Department of uh, Water, they were hacked, I think, somewhere around of August, right? So I don't want any organization out there to be complacent. Cybersecurity issues are very, very huge. And so you have to, we all have to take it very seriously um, in order to really um, safeguard and protect our business and our, and our asset. Mm -hmm. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, can. Really, yeah. Yeah. can you talk yeah. about the UK? What happened in the UK? Because wasn't like um, Liz Truss's email hacked or her phone hacked? Isn't that all part of cybersecurity? Right. Okay. So it, it, <laughs> it's an interesting one, actually. It, it was security, but not cybersecurity. It was um, Suella Braverman. She actually, you know, it's part of cybersecurity is human behavior as well. So Suella Braverman had gone and emailed sensitive government emails on her personal um, email. So, so that comes in terms of not so much the technical side, but you need um, programs or, or ways to 
verify that your staff have also taken, you know, code of business, code of conduct training um, to ensure that, you know, you don't have staff emailing sensitive company data out of the organization or organizations need to have security controls in place um, that prevents, you know, so if someone accidentally goes to upload company information to their Dropbox or email it on their Google Drive, um, there's security technologies that can prevent things like that happening. So obviously, as, as we've all seen over the last couple of weeks, Suella Braverman um, has been pulled up, you know, like a, apparently on six occasions, um, she had she, she had um, emailed sensitive government information on her personal account. So it's, so maybe someone in the in the government who's responsible for that um, is getting their their, um, their their ears or their head <laughs> slapped. Yeah, and wow. you're not making sure that, that you know because organizations can put technology in place that prevents unintentional um bad behavior happening okay if that makes sense and okay. then to also just to add so you were asking about is cyber security what cyber security like in africa or in ghana so yeah what i was going to say is like one of my big customers um over the years has been mtm so, oh, so, okay. the, so, so the technology that we've actually provided is all around, you know, the vulnerability management. So, you know, cyber security technology that looks across their network and detects anything that changes or um, that shouldn't be happening across their network and, in, and, and also ensures that it's compliant to their industry standards and regulations. So um, what, what I would say in Africa, it's probably more mature in, you know, banking and financial services and also yeah. the telecommunication organizations where because they they operate internationally, there's big regulations around those organizations be, being compliant and maybe government as well. But it's, main, it's mainly the t telecommunications and banking and financial services that I've tended to have experience with. Okay, okay. Um, so I've got, so Kay has, I don't know if you can read this, Edmund. Yes, I can read it. Which one? The Ghana National Cyber Center at this point. Don't, uh, On the screen. Yeah, I think the Ghana, um, the Ghana National Cyber Center is doing a great job. Um, and I've been following what's happening in Africa, especially in Ghana. Um, I personally have had an incident where a lady um, her phone was compromised and someone took really bad photos from her phone. And this guy went ahead and published it on a, on a, on a website. So the moment that she reported to me and said, you know, if there was a way I could hack into the phone, I mean, try and hack into the, the server. And I said, nah, I don't do those things, right? Um, long story short, I worked with someone from the Ghana Cyber Center and also the Ghana Police and we were able to, sh to shut down the website um, that was publishing, you know, nude photos of females. So um, I think that Ghana National Cyber Center is doing an amazing job. But again, even the U.S. government is getting hacked. Even the White House, in a day, sometimes they get 10,000, sometimes up to a million uh, yeah. breach, breach attempts, right? So, and I, I, I have seen company within 10 minutes, you can get thousands of attackers trying to penetrate the website. So that's how bad is uh, uh, um, the threat landscape is right and, and nowadays we have governments also involving themselves in security cyber security issues in terms of just government sponsoring cyber security criminals to try and hack into other governments because you know of course nobody wants to go to war now it's too expensive but cyber security someone can sit somewhere in russia right now uh, and they can do it cause a lot more damage to nat national security than anything right so cybersecurity issues needs to be really taken very seriously. As for my mm -hmm. cost, the cost is $3,000. So I know a lot of people in Africa might not be able to afford, but we do have a program that is coming and it's going to help you. If you live anywhere in the West, UK, Canada, Australia, it is $3,000. We have a very good payment plan available for you. Um, and so, yeah, so reach out to me or reach out to any of my, um, my, um, my fellow um, you know, some of my my, my other co um, 
partners and then we'll get you enrolled and make sure you are trained. Okay, I think my line broke up. So it's $3,000 for the course. And yes. do you help them get a job afterwards as well? Is yes, if you live in the you US, do? I call it I call it job guaranteed if you live in the US or Canada and the UK as well. The jobs are there. Right now, as of this morning, when I checked the US alone, we have over 769,000 jobs available. Out of this 769,000, Almost 300,000 of these jobs are remote jobs, right? So the jobs are there. Um, just We just need people who are trained, right? Um, so um, if, even if you don't enroll in my course, please find a very good cybersecurity book or, you know, a YouTube video that will help you and, you know, learn and also find a job in the field because it's a very lucrative industry. Um, I am projecting that um, cybersecurity industry is going to be the number one um, job field globally, globally, because as you guys know, even, you know, the tomato seller is now trying to have to have their business online. Right. And as you go online, it, it increases the attack surface and also people working remotely. Right. Um, I, you know, whenever I travel, even though I'm an American, I live in America, Ghanaian American, I live in America and I travel, I go with my work computer. Right. What if, you know, if someone is malicious, they can steal data. And so um, we as cybersecurity professionals, it's also our job to make sure we educate people and also make sure we put in place security controls to help prevent some of these things from happening. And um, then to just to add and, um, on, and everyone listening in, cybersecurity, when we talk about it, this is a huge industry. So if you, it's a trillion dollar industry. So I, I, I want to just give some people some understanding of the context here, yeah? So just as we have many large corporate legitimate organizations, so think of all the big legitimate corporate organizations that we know out there, there is the dark side. So there is big corporations of cybersecurity criminals that operate just like um, the large organizations that we know of, know of yeah. sorry. So they have people on payroll, they have human resources, and these people are employed to go out there and cause um, you know, damage because you know, they're looking at monetary gain. So yeah. you know, we all see these like um, fake text messages that come out, fake emails. So that's people that are employed. Yes, so many. So to go and, yeah. So just like someone who's working a legitimate job, every day there's people that are employed to do this from a, a criminal activity yep. perspective yep and ju okay. Julian, just to add on to what you just said mm -hmm. like I, recently i was doing working with this client of mine and this client um someone was able to hack into an employee's email right once they hacked into the email of the employee they were able to um actually the, the, this the, the email the employee that was hacked was actually the ceo right in cybersecurity, mm -hmm. we call that whaling once the CEO was hacked, that person was able to send an email from the CEO's email to the CFO, the chief finance officer, right? Requesting for $1.8 million to be paid. And this person, you know, of course, the CFO also respects the CEO, right? Because the email came from the CEO. You, you know your CEO. He signed a check of $1.8 million to the criminals, okay? And nowadays with Bitcoin, it's so easy for criminals to take money. We also have countries like Cayman Islands, the Panama, and all those places where you can hide your money without anybody, literally nobody can even find out about it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a really huge industry. Criminals, the criminal underworld. And there's a website called Darknet Diaries. Please look mm -hmm. for it. You know, listen to Darknet Diaries. And you, you're going to realize how vulnerable you are as a person, right? And these attackers, they know human vulnerabilities. They know where, you are weak, where your weaknesses are. They know when you are sleeping and when you are not, okay? And when you are sleeping, they are not asleep because, you know, they have multiple people. Like he said, it's a huge industry. It's a $6 trillion industry as of 2021. $6 trillion is, is there's almost the size of the UK economy. Okay, so that is that is huge. That is huge. And criminals every year, they make trillions of dollars from some of these things. 
So, mm. so yeah. So look into this it's cyber so security. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look into the cyber no, security. No, so field. true because um, just I think just last week I was telling um my husband that we we got an email from HSBC, but it just looked weird. It was like you know we've been trying to contact you, you know, um click on this link, contact us. And I was just like. And it had a particular number, and I googled the number to see whether it's from HSBC, and it wasn't. It was like, you know, these people that are gonna you're gonna call and they're gonna take your details and you know um, get access to your account and stuff and probably hack your phone as well. Um, so there's a lot of that going on at the moment. Yeah. So I'm sure that there's a, a lot of um, jobs out there to kind of counteract that. Yeah. Um, yeah. The people that are doing that. And, and and also another thing is if you look at the way the world is digital now, so that there's a term called Internet of Things. So I'll, I'll use a, a real estate analogy because real estate is big in Ghana, right? And, you know, you've got all these developers now that they create and build smart homes. So if you can imagine someone's house, everything is digitally controlled from how you get into the house to your fridge, freezer, to your curtains, the music, etc. So all of that now, the organizations that are providing all that technology and gadgets, even down to people's electric cars now, that all needs to be, it needs to be underpinned by cybersecurity. So that yeah. means that people with the skills now is that whole, every market is expanding. Every organization is a technology organization and needs someone to be able to, to manage and take care of the security aspects of their products, their services, their transactions, everything. Yeah. So it's only, as, as we're saying here, it's, it's only expanding. So yeah. um, the, the, yeah. the other beauty that the industry brings is because it's digital, so people can re work remotely. So you can, you know, if you're a, an engineer, you can remote log into to your systems, etc. So the, the, the world is a change in place and it's, it's, it's creating lots of opportunities rapidly right now. Yeah, so Derek just asked a very good question um, regarding compliance. So compliance is a huge thing, especially if you live um, somewhere in the US, UK, Canada, Australia, any of those countries. Um, um, for example, in, the, in Europe, they, like um, um, Julian said earlier, there is the GDPR. So if you are a company who operate in the European Union, you have to adhere to G GDPR requirement, which basically says, you know, protect your customers' uh, private information, like their email, their phone number, and all that. So Facebook, I think um, four years ago, they were fined almost $2.9 billion. The truth is they don't want to pay $2.9 billion. So they would rather hire someone, um, you know, as a cybersecurity person to come and help them uh, protect the company. Um, and make sure the company is meeting those regulatory requirements and 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 also laws and compliance requirements. Um, so yeah, so definitely someone asked about basic qualification. So you don't really need to have a basic qualification. Like I said, for my course, all I need you to know is to be able to read and write. Once you can read and write, um, you can take the course. But of course, you need a certification. And we are going to help you, We're going to provide you with the resources on how to take those certifications. Um, we've already done it for some students, and they are all every every student of mine who already passed my program. They all have certifications to be able to apply for jobs, and so yeah. So become a Prime Tech Associate, mm -hmm. kindly enroll in our course, and we can provide more details. Oops, Dente, we can't hear you. You're muted. I'm, I'm on mute. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, I was going to say, Edmund, how many people have gone through your course and what have they come out with and where are they working? How much have they earned it, et cetera? Can you shed more okay, light so on that? so this year, I started this program this year. Um, I started, um, I think, around April was my first class, right? And so far, we've trained about 48 people. And currently, um, all, the first batch Every, almost everybody is employed. Um, and that was about 20 something people. Almost every, because they, like I said, the jobs are there and they are make some of them, there's one particular person who is making almost $250,000 a year. It is, the jobs are there, okay? You can get it. But the average salary here in America is between 90,000 and 140,000. That is the average salary, right? So once you have the training, you've gone through a training, it is easy to find a job. And the U.S. government, if you're a U.S. citizen, 
always, always hiring. It, they are always, they are the number one uh, employers when it comes to cybersecurity professionals, right? So, um, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, what, if, what if you're here and you are trained in, like if you're in Ghana, how do you get mm -hmm. a job? Like how does it work if you, if I- that one, that one is tough. It's tough to get a job because in Africa, right? If you live elsewhere, it might be easy. I have worked with people in Israel when I was working at uh, Intel. I had people who worked at um, who worked from Israel, from India, and all those places. In fact, my boss at the time, who was the chief information security officer, he was directly he was he went he's an Indian and he he lived in India. He's never been to America. Okay, so you can get jobs, but it is tough in Africa, and it's it's because again you need to have trust, right? And that is why we, some of us, we are trying to make sure that we bring more black people to the table. Because the truth is in technology, you don't see a lot of black people on the table. Okay, you see a lot more different colors, but not black people. And I want to bridge that gap. I want to get a lot of people involved because then it is easy for us to take contracts here in America and hire people back home in Africa and have them do the job. Okay, it is, you know, but I know people who are also doing some work on Fiverr for instance, there's someone that I know, what he does is he writes security policies. So on Fiverr, you can go there and you can put yourself out there and say, oh, I'm very experienced in PCI DSS, for instance. And someone can set up, let's say, consult, you can consult, right? So someone wants to work with you, they can pay you $50 an hour to help them write a security policy, for instance, right? So there, the opportunities are there, you just have to create them if you live in Africa. If you live in Ghana, you have to create those opportunities yourself. Um, you can do, go into policy, you know, writing policies. You can go into compliance where basically you are helping people meet their regulatory compliance. But you, first of all, you have to be trained first before you can, we can even have that discussion. Mm. Julian, do you guys have, um, like, if somebody gets trained in Ghana, do you have an opportunity to work in the UK? online is that possible or you have to be based in the in the uk no so so the collaboration i'm doing with azubi they work to get contracts and outsource those, those people so what, one of the things happening in ghana is what they call is bpo services so so those are people like B, um, azubi where they will train you and then find international companies where they can outsource you um, re remotely too so please um i'll put i'll put the details in the chat for azubi so you can reach out to the the, the team there but like i said th their main focus is people going through the three-month boot camp and then they have been you know outsourcing their their um engineers to um to companies rem okay. remotely all right yeah yeah put the details in there for me, yeah yeah the, the other thing that I've put in the and you shared in the chat is um, there's the Tech in Ghana conference. So Tech in Ghana is a, is a two day event where it brings the whole Accra and Ghana tech ecosystem together. So you know, please come along to that. I know we have got some a couple of Ghanaian um, consulting companies that are going to be at the event who are cyber security. There's one lady, um, she, she, so she's a female. CEO and she has a, a consultancy called Adinkra, um, where she's based in Ghana and in the US. So she will be there and, and she can maybe discuss opportunities with her consulting company. Um, but yeah, do come out to that event. I'll be there as well. So you, you can speak to me and Azubi will be there and are participating as well. And there's also the Afrotech here. There's also Afrotech. Um, Go it's, ahead. A, it's a conference, uh, um, black conference. If you live in the US, Canada, it's a huge one as well. Feel free to, you know, to take part in that one if you live in the US or UK. I think the next one is in Austin, okay. Texas. Who has asked a question? No, no, no finish so, that, Edmund, and then answer that. So my course is not about PCI DSS or um, GDPR or ISO 27000. And I think that is the problem. A lot of people, when we're trying to get in the field, we try and we hear some things and we want to all go for it. But you have to get your foot in the door and find out what you really, what you really want to do, right? So my training is geared towards getting you your foot in the door. PCI DSS will restrict you to only the payment card industry, 
Okay, so you finish your PCI DSS training, or for example, you finish you know um, training in HIPAA training, and you won't find a job. And the reason why you won't find a job is because you restricted yourself, right? Um, what I did was I started working in the field. Once I became good at it, I then decided I want to specialize in risk management, right? So I help large organizations manage their risk. You can do the same thing. You can get in. Once you get in, then you can ask yourself, which field do you really want to do? Work? Yeah, you can apply online. Go to um, www.primetechassociates.com and then you can... Um, you can apply on on the on the platform, or you can test me, and I'll send you the information on how to apply for it. And I think so, someone was asking Edmund, will you do a discount for our, our brothers <laughs> yeah. and sisters? In, in I cannot class. talk about that right right on this platform, but just reach out to me once I know your interest level. We will see where your interest aligns with mine, and then we will see how you know. Don't focus so much about the money. I think. I really want people to come in there with passion for the field, right? And then we will, we will help you, make sure we help you, okay? We are very flexible um, and we'll make sure you are comfortable and, and, and the payment is easy for you. So yeah, take part. Um, is, is don't worry, this time we'll take care of. Edmund, Edmund, is that yeah. payment for like, so it yes. maybe people start paying now and then by January, they, you know, like is you there can, payment? You can do that. Yes, in fact, I have, one person who just paid like two hours ago and decided they want to do January class. So she said, you know, I don't have 3000. I want to pay 500 every, every two weeks uh, until January. So by January, I'll just pay the rest. You can do that. You know, I'll work with you. Don't worry about that. I'll work with you to make sure payment is easy for you. Um, the course is 100% online um, and it's recorded as well. Um, the moment you pay me today, you can watch some of my previous videos um and just so you are you know you, you get yourself involved um early and so by january you know it will be easy for you when you start the class awesome i i and i i must say um to kind of vouch for edmund my husband is also doing the course um he started the course he's he's enjoying it um and i think that you know people should just try it you know it's a it's a new thing um, and, you know, he just wanted to try it and see if he can get some extra, extra skill, extra knowledge. Right. So I think that if you're out there and you, you know, you think that it would be good for you, I think that you need to, you need to try. Okay. So Kwabna has another question. Yeah. That would not be a hindrance because you live in, in fact, I have someone who works for me who is in Sweden. Okay. Um, if you are Swedish, you you guys are that's you you guys are the the white people. You know, you guys are the people with opportunities. Okay, so um, it's a plus. Okay, if you live in Sweden, Finland, or any of those European countries, this is a huge field, and um, you know, most definitely look into cybersecurity. Yeah, I, I, I've I've worked a lot in Sweden over the years, so I've worked mm -hmm. with a lot of the banks out there and a lot of the. The big tech companies. So, I mean, I, I used to be in Stockholm like every month during yep, the pandemic. Yep. So, the the market and the opportunity out there is is big. Yep. I, I think yep, one of my huge. biggest customers there was was Handels Bank and Bank. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a huge it's a huge uh, market in Europe um, and in the US. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Wow. And then, can you tell us? You know, like when we hear cyber, I know you've touched on it, but like, what are the other aspects? You know, like if you're a doctor, you can be gynecologist, you can be a cardio. Okay. What other like things can you do under this cybersecurity? Okay. okay, thank you, Julian. You want to go or you want me to go? I'll I'll I'll, I'll kick off with a couple and then you can carry on. So okay. the big area right now is cloud security, because a lot of again, when you think of the pandemic and everyone, you know, logistics and supply chains, um, and then they've also got you know the initiative the initiative around. Um, Globe, you know the, the the climate situation. So a lot of organisations are moving from having big, massive data centres to moving all their technology and infrastructure into the cloud. And so what that also results in is being able to um, secure all of that data and information going from being on premise in a data centre on physical servers 
to being in, you know, like Amazon or Microsoft's big data centers in the cloud. So cloud security um, is a big area. And then I'll hand over to you, Edmund, to talk about all the other. Thank you, Julian. Other, other Thank areas. you. So, so cybersecurity, just like the medical field, is a huge field. Okay, there are people who are on the offensive side. And there are people who are the, on the defensive side. So offensive basically means you are the one attacking. You are the one who is always trying to attack, right? And um, in under offensive, there is what we call ethical hacking or pen testing. Okay, I have been a pen tester for the U.S. government. Um, when I, um, I'm actually also in the in in the in the Air Force. So I am a cybersecurity guy for the U.S. Air Force. And um, what we do is very simple. We try to find. We try to find vulnerabilities before the Russians and the Chinese will find them, right? So part of what we do is we try to um, we, we we try to hack into our own planes, for instance. You know, we try to see if there is a gap somewhere that a Chinese can exploit, and you can find yourself doing that job, doing that for a company, right? Where your job is basically to find vulnerabilities um, for the company. You can also go into um, you know, for instance, somebody just posted it there. You can do vulnerability management. Vulnerability management, your job is basically to find vulnerabilities, so weaknesses in a system. Um, sometimes companies, you know, will, will come up with this product, right? Um, your job is to be the one who will find those weaknesses in that product, and so the company can fix it before an attacker will fix it. You can also work in risk management. You can work in uh, compliance. Compliance is basically... Um, saying that uh, if you work, for example, in healthcare industry, you are supposed to adhere to HIPAA laws, which you know says you should protect patient information. If you work, um, for example, in the European Union, you should be protecting um, citizens, the uh, citizens of the European Union, their, their data. You can find a job in that field as well. You can find your job. It's just so many jobs, so many jobs. You can be you can be a governance expert. If you're a governance expert. Your job is basically to write policies. So you can write policies and organize organizations, large organizations, they need policies so employees can actually follow the rules of the company, right? So they can protect themselves. So there are a lot of work, a lot of jobs in this field. And you just have to get your foot in the door first. And once you are in there, then you can figure out, okay, which area should I specialize, right? Cloud is also becoming very huge. Internet of Things is becoming very, very huge. You can get into that. And now, very soon, quantum computing is going to be huge, and we will need people to go protect them. We see a lot of automation going on. All these machines that are being developed that can do certain things, people need to protect them. These are all jobs that are going to be created for cybersecurity professionals to go and protect them. But first of all, get your foot in the door. Get your foot in the door. Love that. Yeah. So, um, you know, a lot of people like are, are, are private messaging me as well and saying, you know, are, are you sure you don't have to have any type of qualification apart from writing? Oh, of course, reading? having a qualification is a plus. It's always a plus to have programming experience. For instance, I'm not a programmer. I've never done coding. But that's why I work for large organizations. And um, someone, someone else on my team, they, have, they are trained in programming, right? Um, so someone else, also networking is also a huge thing, right? You can become a network security engineer. And I have worked in organizations where even though I was a network security engineer, I had no networking background and I had to learn it on the job, right? So, so there are so many, so many avenues, so many things that are necessary, but you don't have to have them, right? Once you get your foot in the door, you're going to learn those, some of the things you're going to mm -hmm. learn. It's just going to come to you naturally. Mm. Do you yeah. think there's a lot of Ghanaians in this space, um, Julian? Have you seen a lot of Ghanaians in this space? I've seen, so So when I've been to events, tech events in Ghana, there's a lot of people that come out to those events. So, so especially around the data protection. So in Ghana, they have the Data Protection Commission, which mirrors the UK Data Protection Commission. So in terms of best practice and what Ghana is adopting to have underpinning, you know, the, the protection of people's information and data. And uh, remember, in Ghana right now, they've got a digital first initiative. So so this digital initiative is looking at Ghanaian citizens and being able to digitize everything from birth to death. 
So what does that mean? That means, you know, from your birth certificate to when you get your um, ID card to when you get your driving license, et cetera, all the way to your death certificate. They want that all, you know, the land situation. They want all of that to be digitized. So there, there is a community that is out there in Ghana. I think, like I said, the industries where it's kind of more enforced and driven is more the, te the telecommunications, banking and financial services and, and government. But, you know, the, in the industry is, is definitely there. The, the other thing I'd like to say is also when you look at it, there's a lot of big global tech organizations who are setting up headquarters in Ghana. Mm. Yeah. So what does that mean? That means if Google has seen, yeah, we want Accra as a place to set up as a hub for our development um, team, is setting a precedence. If Twitter is saying, yeah, we want to set up a hub in Accra, other, other big companies are going to follow suit. And then also what I've seen is other smaller niche companies or diaspora people who have come out and said, look, I want to set up an AI artificial intelligence um, hub in, in Accra. I know people that have, have done that recently. So what it's saying is that it's the industry and the market is going to only be growing. So if you are gaining those skills right now, it means that you're putting yourself in a competitive um, position to when those opportunities start opening up because those opportunities will be opening up. It's down to, you know, everyone who's on the call now who, who's interested um, to start, you know, getting the necessary skills um, and getting themselves ready. Yeah, um, most definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julian. In fact, I have one of my uh, previous students. He just told me to talk about, he got a job in auditing. So as, as we were chatting, he, he tested me. He was like, hey, can you talk about auditing a little bit? Um, so you okay. can become an auditor too. You know, you can get a job with any of the top four auditing companies, KPMG, PricewaterhouseCoopers, or, you know, NS and Young or Deloitte. Um, these companies are hiring every day. They need people um, to go and audit to make sure that companies, um, when they put in place controls, um, those controls are actually working as they are intended. You know, so so a, a lot a lot of jobs. Um, someone says I'm skeptical, um, but I'll try again because I once did Oracle database in Ghana and was promised a job. Yeah, I understand you'll be skeptical. Um, you know. But again, like I said, you don't have to take my course if you don't feel, if you don't trust me enough. I'm on the entire show. If I was just an ordinary person, I wouldn't be, <laughs> I wouldn't be on the entire show, right? So um, take a course, you know, do your own self-study, you know, find resources on YouTube and study and find a job in cybersecurity. I definitely think it's going to change your life, just like it changed my life, okay? I was just an ordinary guy. You know, making like I said, I, I work three jobs to make fifty thousand dollars a year. Today, I have employees who make more than fifty thousand dollars a year work, who work under me. So I, I won't I won't try to convince you. You know, I, what all I want you to do is just I'm just going to tell you to look into this field. Okay, just look into it, especially if you are considering a career change. Look into this field, and you'll never regret it. It's going to change your life. Yeah. Awesome. And Julian as well, I just want to touch on, like, I know a couple of friends that are in the UK that, you know, are doing, are working from home now and they want to kind of work in Ghana, but their workplaces are not allowing them because of security issues. Like, what, what do you think is, what is the barrier in, in Ghana that, you know, or, or Africa that is, is inhibiting us from doing online from, from Ghana? Right, okay. It's, it's a good point you raised because I was having a, this conversation with someone else recently. Mm. So it's down to your the organization or business that you work for. It's down to their policy. So if, if they have a policy that they don't want, um, you know, employees. So, so, so someone I was talking to works for a local council and that council has a strict policy that they don't like their devices being used abroad. So if, if you work for that organization, they, they may have a strict policy to say, look, because 
we are a government organization. We don't want any security risks. There's someone having their, their machine hacked or losing their device in a foreign country, for example. So it's re the, the, the answer is it's really down to whatever your company's policy, security policy is around remote working. So for example, for my, my company, um, I could probably work remotely, but my role actually involves me being in front of customers as well. So I don't have that luxury to say I'm just 100% working remotely. So any, anyone would need to look at the organization that they're working for. You know, if they're wanting to work remotely, they might need to look at a company that provides that flexibility. Yeah, because there's a lot of people now want to work from Ghana, you know, but they, they want to chill and, and work at the same time. <laughs> but their companies are not allowing them. Yeah. Especially during December. Like, I know a lot of people, but then yeah, just the companies are like, nope. It's not happening. No. So in the U.S., you can actually get those jobs. In the U.S., you can. Okay. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can we can. Yeah. Can you, so yeah, um, I, th I think it's so really, in the US really you down. can get. So go on, go on, Edmund. You can get those jobs, especially if the company is a larger organization. Okay. If you let's take a company like Google, Microsoft, and those companies. Once you have VPN connection, right, and you have been working there for a long time, they trust you. You, they can, you know, even within a year after working in the company for a year, you can, like I have a client or everyone in the company. I, in fact, I have a Ghanaian, someone who lives in Ghana right now who works for the client. Okay, I have one guy who lives in Cameroon and he works for the client. So it depends, right? It depends. I guess it depends on what company and what they are into. Some companies, some product, you cannot, like I work for the government, I cannot work outside unless I'm in, on a military base, right? So literally, mm -hmm. if anytime on, I'm on government duty, I have to be in a, in a secure room, right? To be able to do my work, right? So, so it depends. It depends on where you work. Somebody's mentioned about tax issues as well. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, so, so that one, you have to talk to a tax attorney, you know, or someone who is a tax expert. But, um, you know, typically, like, when, when if you work for a company and you live in a different country, of course, you have to pay taxes in both countries, you know. Um, like, you have to pay taxes. Like me, I'm living in a different state in the U.S. and work in a different state. I have to pay taxes in both, both states, right? So, um, but the best person to really answer this question would be someone who's a tax expert. 100%. Um, uh, I think you have a point there, but uh, Julian's details. You, Julian, you want no, to go on, Edmund. Were you going to say something? Yeah. So someone asked a question about getting network, uh, having network issues. That is definitely a problem everywhere, even in America. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so don't don't feel like our countries we are, you know, in the worst position. It is like that everywhere. Trust me. Um, I have worked in really remote part of America doing cybersecurity consulting. And trust me, sometimes there's something called DSL. It is the slowest, it's like 3G. Um, you know, that's what you get. That's the maximum you get over there. But, you know, so it's the same as Ghana. Okay. So we're wrapping up. So your last words to, you know, those people that are still like, mm, I'm not sure. Mm -mm. This thing, are you sure? I'd rather going to be a, 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 a doctor or a nurse, you know, what would your advice be to them? Look, my, my, yeah, my, my advice is this look, there's careers in every area. Okay. If your motivation is you want it to be in an industry that's very lucrative, okay, and enables you to have the lifestyle, the freedom. Um, you know, as we were sharing earlier, also enables us to, to invest back into um, Ghana, Africa and the diaspora, then cybersecurity and tech is, is, is only growing exponentially and rapidly. So it will give you that kind of security as well um, and is beneficial for, for every industry. So, so, so my, my thing is you can get started in this industry um, and you can grow 
you, you, you know, you can grow in, and, it, and it's limitless in terms of the options or how it how it's just, you, you know, transforming. So I definitely say um, it's a great industry to get involved in. Over yeah, to you, so thank you, Walker. I think you did. I you, this question I just responded. Um, so your first thing you need is really to be able to read and write. That is very important. Okay. And another skill that I, I always tell my student, there, you have to be confident in yourself, okay? It doesn't matter. To be successful in America, if you live abroad, to be successful, you have to be confident, okay? You have to build some confidence that puts you above. Some people will call you narcissist, but just be you, okay? Be confident in your skill, okay? Um, the skill you need, be confident, secondly, you have to read, you like to have passion for reading. Okay, that is the main thing. And also you have to be able to write. Once once you have those three skills, I, I can mold you to become a cybersecurity professional. The rest, you know, um, those are the main thing. Honestly, I don't care about the degrees you have because nobody, when I'm hiring someone, I don't look at the degrees you have. Because the truth is, the, the America, they don't care. In cybersecurity, they don't care about your, your degrees. Mm -hmm. I have an MBA. Trust me, with my MBA in management information systems, I couldn't find a job. I couldn't find a job for almost two years. I couldn't find a job. But the moment I got Security Plus, I was able to, like I said, get jobs and they, they, they keep coming every single day. Um, mm -hmm. CISSP is, is, the, is the gold standard. That is the certification everybody should get uh, if you really want to make more money in cybersecurity. That is what I have. I have CISSP. But... When you're a new person, you cannot get CISSP. Just work in the field a little bit, get some experience, and then you can take that CISSP certification. It's, it's very difficult and it's very expensive. You don't want to, you don't want to fail that exam. It's gonna, it, it will make sense. And and, and okay. then, this is we're, we're okay. wrapping up. Again, everyone who's asking about experience. I've worked in this industry. So people ask me, oh, you must have lots of um, degrees and lots of qualifications. Nope, I've just been, you, you know, willing to learn, worked in good companies where you've had all the training um, and, the, and the mentorship and working with the best of breed technologies, yeah. et cetera, yeah? So for me, it's just been, I've had that opportunity and you know, people are only looking at what, what, what have you last done because they want you now to come and bring value to their organization. So as long as, as Edmund was saying, you get your foot in the door, you will then be able to, pro once your foot's in the door, you'll be able to progress, whether that's in the organization you're in or whether that's, you know, it's time to transition and move to other, other opportunities because people, there's demand. So people are always willing to pay good money for, for good people and, and when you build a good reputation. So you wouldn't, you. you would, you've ne you wouldn't change your career after being in there for twenty years. Is there anything else that you've learned in the tech industry that would move you out of cybersecurity? If it, um, so, for me, it's more just if there are other more interesting options. You know, it's it's more about okay, if there's something more interesting, I've got the option to go and move into that field out of choice. You know, I, I, I was saying to my wife earlier that. If she talks about the industry that I've uh, I've been in, she she enjoys the perks where I go on presidents clubs and go to luxury places like Hawaii. <laughs> where we sales years, yeah. So she's going to tell you she's going to tell you that's her experience of the, the cybersecurity world. <laughs> uh, Julian, are you are you marketing? No, I I do sales and partnership management. Oh, that's so, good. That's good. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love it. That's so, cool. So, so, so my, yeah, my remit is more, you know, working with the, the systems integrators like Fujitsu or Accenture and, yep. you know, managing that whole engagement and then the projects that they yep. go and deliver. Okay, good. Good. So let's, I let's, let's touch base, man. I bring, call it. Technical, I, I bring the technical guys who go yeah. and do implement, you know, what we've agreed to. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Let's. I'll reach out to you, man. Yeah. No, thank definitely. You. I'm going to connect the two of you up. But your last words, Edmund, before we go to those people who okay. are mm, still not sure, but, you know, thinking about it. 
Okay, thank you. Um, so first of all, thank you guys for watching. Um, it's been an amazing session. I've learned a lot from Julian. Um, I highly encourage you guys to look into cybersecurity field. It's it's a very lucrative field. Um, if you are interested in enrolling my course or even having a conversation, you know, please just reach out to me. I have a very good WhatsApp group. I will add you to my group. Um, if you have any questions, of course, you can always put post your questions there and someone will be willing to answer your questions. Um, but if you're interested in the January class, my phone number is on the screen. Please call me or just test me and then we can have a conversation. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you both for coming on the show. I really appreciate you both. Um, you know, I'm always trying to see how we can develop our nation, see how we can develop as a people and bring opportunities to our people. And so I think that what you guys have offered today is a really good insight into cybersecurity. Um, whether people go on Edmund's course or they don't, or they, you know, go into um, Azubi, um, the, the course online with Microsoft, et cetera. I think this is an eye opener. This is for you to learn that, look, there is something outside there that you can actually tap into. Um, and so thank you so much for sharing your insights into this. I really appreciate you guys. And um, I will definitely catch you on the other side. I'm going to say goodbye to my people. Uh, but right. thank you so much for joining me on the show. And I'll connect you guys up on WhatsApp in a moment. Thank you. Yeah. Hey guys, I hope that you have enjoyed the show. It's been absolutely amazing. I haven't done an online in so long and I apologize, but I'm going to try and come back more often and bring you more opportunities. Um, so if you are interested and yes, Kotoko, we won today. Yay, 2-1, fabulous, fabulous, the best. Um, but yeah, I think that if you are in Ghana, make sure that you come to the Tech Summit, which is happening in Ghana. Um, Julian is going to be there. You can have a conversation with him and interact with him um, and get more information. If you want to call Edmund, please do call him on the line that he's put. Um, and I'll put um, Julian's uh, uh, partnership website that he's working with is on, on, the, uh, on the screen right now. Get in touch with them. But try it. Let's see. You never know. You know, if you don't try, you will never know. Um, and that's something that I always do. I'm always trying new things. I'm always exploring. And I think that this looks like a great opportunity if you are, if it feels exciting for you, definitely join up. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have all, all subscribed to my YouTube channel and you have all liked my Facebook page. Um, I'm going to be actually... I interviewed the ANC Mall, um, the founder of ANC Mall um, in Ghana. Um, it's Can you imagine that ANC Mall was a first mall that was built in Ghana and it's fully owned by Ghanaians, um, Mr. and Mrs. Asamwa. Um, I interviewed them. It's going to really inspire you guys. You know, I'm always encouraging the diaspora to come back. You know, they stuck with it through thick and thin um, to make sure that this great mall stays and it would definitely stay for many, many, many years to come. Um, so, yeah, and if you are in the diaspora, you want to um, connect with the diaspora diaspora network, which is the Guba Diaspora Network. You know, we try and help diasporans move back home, do business in Ghana, whatever it is. Um, please hit me up, send me a message, and I'll send you the link to join the network. Um, we have events coming up in December. December in Ghana is always big. We have an old school uh, kind of reunion that we're doing. So looking at 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s music um, and just really getting the vibe. We're also doing a Guba tour uh, where we're going to have a retreat. So usually we go to Akosombo, but this time we're not. We're going to somewhere else. And I encourage all of you to join us and have a retreat and just relax and think about what you're going to do in 2023. Manifest it, think it, believe it. Um, and, you know, make it happen in 2023. And then we have the Guba Diaspora um, Network Conference for the diasporans who are, again, looking to do stuff in um, Ghana. We're here for you. OK, don't give up on Ghana. Things are tough. Things are very, very tough. But I think when things are tough, that's when we all need to be tougher and, you know, put our hands in, put our legs in to make sure that, you know, we fight for our country and we do the right things in our country as well. So thank you all for watching the show. I will see you hopefully next week, Sunday. I'll try and come on. I'll try and do a live. I'll try and do a live. Thank you all for watching. Take care. God bless. Bye bye.